morning, everyone. My name is Naomi, Dr. Naomi Ojuma. I am from St. George's University, but I'm here for a few weeks doing research at the Seattle Science Foundation. Here again, I was here last year as well, so thank you for having me a second time. So my paper is about um, Dorcas. Dorcas, it's a co cover editorial, so it's a short paper about Dorcas Pate and what she did, um, her contributions towards spinal dysraphism. So um, I enjoy doing this paper so much because it's almost like a historical paper. It's, it's a historical paper and a scientific paper. So I got to learn about who she was and what she did, and I thought that was very interesting. So I'm going to talk about her a little bit, then I'm going to talk about what she did. So a few slides, a few of my slides would be a lot of girl power, because I thought she was amazing. OK, so she was born in 1906. Um, and she was raised in New York. She always had like an interest in biology, and so she um, did illustrations for botany textbook with the help of her teacher, Ada Wadler. With the um, with recognition recognition of that textbook, she got a grant to study in Vassar College, and in her work there, through her work there, she was introduced. Her professor introduced her to. Um, Her professor works and professor introduced her to the department of um, John, John Hopkins. So yes, this arts as applied to medicine department of John Hopkins. Okay, so while she was there in 1926, she wrote to Max Broadwell suggesting that she leave Vassar for one year and take a medical illustration course. But Max Broadwell is um, a very well well known um, illustrator. He also is a director of. Um, I was also a director at John Hopkins of Art as Applied Sciences, Applied Medicine in John Hopkins. And so Broadway wrote back to her saying that she, she needs to finish her degree and then apply. She was very relentless. She, she sent him some of her um, work and said, no, I'm that awesome, so consider me. And um, he wrote back. He also worked with Dandy Walker, um, who later on I'll tell you that Dorcas was um, Dandy Walker employed Dorcas as a medical illustrator. But he also worked with Dandy Walker, and he knew that he needed a medical illustrator. So he said, OK, um, if um, you can work with him, and as an, we'll, you work with him um, on a stipend and possibly get a full position at the end of your um, degree. She ended up not graduating from Vassar, and that caused a little bit of problems later on, but she still, she still went on. Okay, so her medical illustrative journey started with um, Dandy Walker. Um, like I said, Dandy Walker was a very, um, it was a neuro, neuro, neurosurgical pioneer. Okay. He was a neurosurgical pioneer, and she got the opportunity to work under him as a medical illustrator. So um, as many um, illustrators in that era, she would stand in his operating room and watch the surgery and later on do her own interpretations of the surgery through drawing and describing everything that she did. And many of those illustrations were used in his book. So these are a few of what she did. I, I keep messing this up, excuse me. Um, if I was an artist, I'd be able to tell you about the angle and the lining and everything, but I can't. But you can see that um, she's telling the story and you can understand um, the medical story through what she's drawing. So a few more. This is, so let me just describe this. So on the left is um, an aneurysm, an, an aneurysm of the internal carotid artery of the brain. On the right is, um, is, a, is a blood supply Again here, this is an expiration of an epidermal tumor of the lateral ventricle from the brain. All these are illustrated in Danny Walker's book. Okay. So she continued to work at John Hopkins. Um, over time, she became more interested in research. She, even after Dandy Walker died, she um, continued to do her work. She was employed in um, the Canada Was Institution of Washington in Baltimore. Um, later on, 
she there she did a lot of her research work. She described fetal arterial development by tracking the vessels through 22 separate embryos, ranging from three and a half to seven weeks. I mean, like even as a medical student, embryology is daunting. So for someone who doesn't have to go to embryology, is some, someone who doesn't have to go to that course and actually does it. That's I just think that's amazing. Um, by in 1952, um, a University of Maryland School of Medicine Division of Neurological Surgery hired her as a research assistant, and she co she chose that um, term or that title because she didn't just want to be known as an artist, but obviously she didn't have the credentials to be known as anything else. Okay, so. Like I said, that's what her barriers. She published articles on nervous system and neurotube mal malformations. She generated a theory that explored the idea that spina bifida was solely caused by, inc by the incomplete neural tube closure. In her research of Arnold Chiari and Dandy Walker syndromes, she coined the term neurochesis, which is what I'm, I'll be talking to you a little bit in a few minutes, um, and then described the neuro abnormal clefts and the neural tube. She authored many papers on congenital malformations, nervous system, and was a pioneer in um, the development of embryological vasculature. Okay, so enough of all that girl power. She was amazing. I thought that she was just amazing. Okay, so before we start going into the theory of um, the neurochesis theory, let's just um, do a recap on some of the embryological terms. Um, Dr. Beck also talked to us about this, so I won't be going too, too much about it. So there's the noctal cord, which is in the middle, the ectoderm over line, mesoderm, endoderm, the neural plate, which is formed by the neural folds and neural groove, um, the neural tube, which eventually forms from the folding of the lateral edges of the neural, neural folds or ectoderm neural fold. Um, and then the neural tube, which gives rise to the prosencephalon, mesencephalon, rhombocephalon, and then later on the spinal cord. So um, by week three, the neural plate is formed, between, like I said, which includes the neural fold and neural groove. Um, neurulation, which is the fusion of the lateral edges of the neural fold, begins and starts at the mid-region mid and advances both cranially and caudally. So by week four, neurotube is formed, and neurotube will give rise to the following. So the prosencephalon, mesencephalon, robencephalon. Okay. So neurochesis is, um, she describes it as meaning neuro, a neural cleft, cleft or the splitting of the neural tube. So the neural tube splits in that area known as the neural cleft. Um, the mesencephalon is the most common site of the cleft. Um, Paget also noted that the that neurochesis is associated with abnormal folding of irregular widened neural tube. Neural tube. So she first of all talks about how um, the um, there is an abnormal growth of the neural tube, which causes an irregular widening, and then there's an abnormal folding of that tube. And so that's where most of the problem starts. Okay, so a bleb is formed during the folding of the neural tube. And um, at the site of the cleft, there's an escape of neurocell fluid into the surrounding mesoderm. The so bleb is walled off by a mesodermal me membrane and covered by an intact cut cutaneous ectoderm. Occasionally, it's covered by ectoderm, sometimes it's not. Um, okay, so essentially, spina bifida um, happens as a result of the different fates of the bleb. So if the bleb eventually ends up being covered by um, con intact cutaneous ectoderm, then you would have um, spina bifida occulta, which we know that doesn't have any symptoms. Um, an intact bleb as loculative fluid collection with mesdermal per periphery is the cystica, spina bifida cystica, and rupturing of the bleb with eversion of the cleft margins will lead to a cranium bifidum. Okay, so the abnormal folding, which is more prominent at the mesencephalon and hindbrain regions, would also lead to narrowing of the neurocell cavity. So imagine that the neural um, tube um, abnormally folds, um, the neurocell cavity is narrowed and could collapse, giving rise to microencephaly. Um, um, that um, collapse of the, of the neurocell could also lead to a stenosis aqueduct of sylvia, so cerebral aqueduct, and that would cause blockage of um, um, CSF from the fourth ventricle and would lead to hydrocephalus. Also, still talking about the abnormal folding, um, 
we now have, like I said, we said micro, microencephaly, we have a small posterior um, fossa. And so development of the cerebellum in that small fossa will lead to hindbrain herniation and Chiari malformation. So this is essentially what I just described. Um, Genetic and, environmental, genetic and environmental factors um, being one of the environmental factors being folic acid deficiency, for instance. Um, you get neurochesis, which is the development of a neural cleft or splitting of a neural tube. Um, you get spina bifida, so it depends on what goes on with the splitting. You have either if it's covered, if it's covered with a cyst, or if it's not covered, if it's not covered at all. Um, Blood rupture will lead to neurosal collapse, a small posterior fossa, and hindbrain herniation. Also, the fact that the brain is, a, is small will lead to hindbrain herniation. Overcrowding, meaning um, when the cells of the cerebellum are developing, that will lead to overcrowding in a small space. Herniation, um, hydrocephalus. So um, that's one of the things that she that she did, and that's what my paper, that's what my cover editorial paper was about. So um, she did have a little bit of health problems, and she worked through that. And by in 1973, she passed away at John Hopkins Hospital, where she worked for so many years. Okay, so that's my references. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Yes. So the new it happens mainly at the mesencephalus, so mainly at the um, midbrain. But um, because, like I said, because you end up with a small brain or microencephaly, then you have overcrowding, and then you have you could have high brain irritation. That's a question too. Um, I, was just, I think you kind of answered it, but it's not really there. It is really the carrying off Yes. 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 Not that I know of, no. It's not, no, no. She was mostly in the spine, and no, I don't think she had anything to do with the pageant, pageant of the breast. So. Thank you. Thank you. Good job.